I'm here with Joe Rotella, and Joe is going to teach us how to do kirigami, which is something I've been really wanting to learn how to do. It looks complicated, but you said it's actually pretty easy. It's not that bad. And start with something simple. We're actually going to start with a very basic box card. Kirigami means to cut paper. It's based on origami, which means to fold paper. So we're going to make a simple box that looks like this. And can you see how this box was the beginning of our cat I in the window? I see that. You could put anything you wanted on that surface. Absolutely. And if you lay it flat, this is actually a very simple card because all it's comprised of is two cut lines. I see those in red here. Five score lines. There you go. So let's start with that. Okay. I'm so you're going to do this in software instead of doing it by hand. Now somebody obviously could do it by hand if they wanted, but if they want to make a million for like birthday invitations or something, Christmas cards, it's easier to do it in software. Absolutely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I turned on rulers and I turned on snap to grid and I'm going to make a card that's five by seven. And so in order for it to be seven wide and five tall when it's opened, it has to be seven by 10. Okay. And I'm going to go over into layers and just lock that layer because I don't want to mess that up. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to mess that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the interior card and the interior card is just a quarter of an inch inside that. Now I can actually zoom in, make this a little bit easier for me. I know. I always feel that way. Like that's one of my favorite things always with any computer program is how easy it is to just zoom in so you can really see. I wish real life was like that. You could just well, push the zoom button. You know, and I have to tell you with bifocals, it's a little trickier than you thought. <laughs> but we're not going to say that, right? We're not going to talk about that. So I'm going to put this a quarter inch on either side and then bring it all the way down to the bottom of the card. And now I have both the inside card, the white part that we're actually going to do our kirigami in, and then I have the part that's all the rest. So the, what you're really talking about is if you look at some of the finished cards, there's an outline that's a colored shape, right? And then there is the white part, which is the inside. Correct. And the rest of this is really all about drawing lines. So I'm going to come in about an inch and a quarter from the side and just about two inches down, and that's where I'm going to start my card. So this grid is quarter inch boxes, so it's pretty easy to just go ahead and measure and say, okay, there's inch and a quarter, and there's this, I'm going to go over four inches, inch and a quarter plus four inches, you can do the math, right? Five and a quarter. Well, I love that I don't have to do the math because you've done the math and all those instructions are going to be on the Make It Artsy website. We're, we're even going to have the file for people to download. So you oh, can so use this base. You know how to do it, but you don't have Absolutely. to. So I'm going to finish that line right there. You and you're just going to double click to finish there it off. Go. There you go. And now I'm going to do the same thing, just an inch below that. So that's four little boxes. Now, right now I'm doing all these as solid lines. But, you know, when we actually make our card, we want these lines to be scored. So I'm going to go ahead and make them dotted. And that's, in essence, how I'm creating a score line in a machine that would normally just cut. So you're basically going to turn it into a perforation or a, some kind of uh, dotted line or dash line or however you want to think about well, it. Well, now that you say it, perforation, I never thought of that. So. <laughs> this is why you have to craft with a friend so you can get all this information. Because one of the things I never knew, which you told me, is that kirigami, which is a Japanese art form, was actually uh, named by an American woman? Yes, Nancy Temko in 1962 wrote a book called the Kirigami, the Art of Paper Cutting. And it was so popular that that took off and that became what we're used to kirigami today. So it actually was started, you know, as an American term. So interesting. So this is how you're turning everything into perforations. I'm just changing them from solid lines to dotted now, lines. Now, is there any rhyme or reason to which of those perfs that you're picking? Well, you know, typically I would always cut practice cards first. If we go too close together, sometimes it actually becomes what I would consider to be a tear line. I was going to say, <laughs> so. that's one of those nerve wracking things is you never know. Now, and here you can see it's tough that I'm, I'm picking things that I don't want to pick. So the handy part here is just going in and saying, I'm going to lock those things. Because once they're locked. And now you can locked, choose whatever you want. Right, I can do that. And I'll do the same here and lock those vertical lines. Because now if I just touch that line, I can go over here and make it dashed. Cool. So I've got all my solid lines. I've got my dash lines ready to go. I need to create that cat in the window. I'm just going to save this. I always say it's a good policy. Save it so that you know that you have your basic there. Absolutely. And then you can always add things to oh, it later. Absolutely. So let's just call this base. 
and I want to show you just how quickly we can do something like the cat. I'm going to create a new window. I like to work somewhere else when I'm doing my insert. Okay. And I've already created an empty, um, what would we call it, just the, the window frame. How's okay. that? Um, so it's just four rectangles. You can see what it looks like right there. Right? It looks like a window frame. It's very simple. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see what's going on there. Then we need to put our cat in there and our bird on a branch. And I'll show you just one part of that process because you just repeat it over and over again. I've got a cat that I've drawn separately. So I can bring that cat in. So cool. And if you can't it. draw, don't worry, because you can download so many free files and things like Absolutely. that of different shapes, whatever but you want. But this is the cool part. I'm going to just move it. I'm going to grow him so he's a little bigger. And now if I take the cat, just its head, and the first box right there, that's all I need, I can go over here to process, down here, overlap, and say remove the overlap. And it doesn't look it. But if we go into the layers, it's actually just taken the cat's head and merged it into the window. So mm. if I do the same thing with his body, I don't want to get that other window, just the cat's body in that. I'm going to go back over here to process overlap, say remove the overlap. And now if we go into layers, I should be able to remove the whole cat. Wow. And there, see how he's just pieced in there? That's so cool. And we'll do the same with the little bird on the branch, and I've already got a bird drawn. I just have to pull him in and grab him where I want him. And now anytime we don't want to touch something, we can just lock it. lock it down. So Joe, how did you discover how to do all this? Just by trial and error and stuff, or, or is this something that you learned from someone else? You know, I'd love to tell you that I learned, but it's, it's play. You can't hurt yes. anything. Right? I mean, what's the worst that can do? Something I agree. You know, doesn't turn out the way you thought. So just play. And these process overlaps are super handy once you get the hang of them. And so, that's part of the play thing is that, you know, you make a mistake, something doesn't turn out, so then you hit the undo button. Well, you just saw me do it there. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. But then it's so easy to go back and make the adjustment that you want so that it's there, and then you know for that's next it. time exactly what you did. So we can save this okay. and go back to our base import it in as and long as we put it together. on top of here. Just mm -hmm. lay it right on top of the square. We're ready to go. And I have one loaded on the machine. Yeah, I know, which means we're going to be able to just press start and it's going to go ahead and cut out. And you can see how cool it's going to look. Now, while that's cutting, you gave me one here that's already done. And one of the things that you mentioned is there's a little bit of cloud paper that if you put it behind, it looks like the cat's looking through the window. That's true. That's the best part. So you can shine. You can shine. You can see all the way through. <laughs> To the card. So I'm just going to go ahead that. and start these folds. Now these perforation lines should make this really, really easy to fold. And I'm going to fold it the other way. And you can hear it scoring. Chuck, 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 chuck. I can. That ka chuck, ka chuck, ka chuck means that it <laughs> is scoring. That's a good sign. That's <laughs> it's a, a good very sign. good sound. So I'm just going to keep now, while you're being folding, careful. Yeah. You know, the cool thing here about this box is you can put other things on it. And I saw that gift card is super cute. On the website, I'm going to give you this little template. And this is just three folds. One, two, three. And you would hear that on, and we have a gift card template. There you go. Oh my gosh, this is so much easier than origami, actually. So then I would just go ahead and put my cloud behind it, put my card behind it, right? And then I would have something that looked like the finished cat over there. And then there's another one you've done over there, which is just Congrats. text. And think of it like a stencil, because you're cutting away pieces, you need stuff to hold on, like the center of O's. So you'd want to connect it to the sides. So if you think like stencils, then this base Kitagami card will work perfect. So cool. So let's just unload it and carefully pull it off of the mat. I can use the spatula to wriggle out that delicate little bird, which I never would have been able to cut by hand. Well, the other thing is, if you wanted to make several of these, it's so easy now. Once you have it designed, you're good to go. Joe, this was really cool. I'm definitely going to make a million of these.